Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Kabuse XB. I'll bring you another Injustice 2 video. And today, what I got for you guys is some official story mode details for Injustice 2. We're going to be talking about some of the details about these characters and some of their specific standpoints and where they are in the Injustice 2 story, what their motives are, and everything like that. Now, initially, we had some details about the story, but it was a very basic concept in that we knew there was going to be a big bad and he was going to come to Earth and for the most part, we were expecting or assuming that the heroes were going to unite to face this big bad. But now, via the characters page on the Injustice website, you actually have a brief description of each character and what's going on and their role in the story mode for Injustice 2. So I picked out a couple that I found the most interesting of all the character bios that you can see. But if you want to read the rest of them, you can definitely do so by going to the Injustice website, which is going to be linked in the description. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now our first character bio comes from Atrocitus, and the bio reads as this. Red Lantern Atrocitus seeks revenge against all members of the Sinestro Corps for their murderous oppression of his home world. His hate blazes a path across the galaxy, leading him to Earth. Sensing an opportunity on the post-regime planet, Atrocitus focuses on bolstering the Red Lantern's ranks by stoking the flames of rage. So it seems between the events of Injustice Gods Among Us and Injustice 2, the Red Lanterns have been at war with the Sinestro Corps. So maybe we're going to get a glimpse of that in the Injustice 2 story if there were to ever be a chapter where we get to play as Atrocitus. I doubt that though, but no matter what, I think we're going to run into this guy. He seems to be a secondary villain that's going to be taking place in the Injustice 2 story. So let's see what kind of role he's going to play in the grand scheme of things. Next up, we have the bio for Deadshot. And his bio reads, Floyd Lawton is the human arsenal. His aim lethal from any range. Having escaped imprisonment during the regime, he now enters the fray as an expert assassin for hire, forced to contend with the fact that Grodd has come into possession of the detonator to the personal explosive device implanted in his head. Now this is very interesting. Because first of all, this kind of confirms that the events of Injustice do take place canonically with the events of Suicide Squad and Floyd Lawton still has the bomb implanted in his head. Unless there's something I missed when I read comics back in the day and Floyd Lawton has always had a bomb implanted in his head. But I'm pretty sure it's because of the Suicide Squad events that he has a bomb implanted in his head. But also the fact that Grodd is the one who has possession of of the detonator to destroy this bomb in his head and basically kill Deadshot at his will. And that leads me now to Gorilla Grodd's bio and it reads as this, Telepathic brute Gorilla Grodd has long sought to prove his peerless genius by subjugating mankind. He's gone so far as to form an anti-justice league, the society to once and for all smash their opposition. Using his intellect and telepathy, Grodd enlists others in his mission to conquer the planet and fill void of power left by Superman's regime. Now, this seems really interesting, and of course, it does seem that this anti-Justice League team that Gorilla Grodd is making is going to include Deadshot, a part of the team, and he's going to force him to join because he has possession of the detonator to Deadshot's bomb. So, it seems like there's going to be a lot of additional villains in Injustice 2 besides Brainiac being the big bad which is probably what we're going to inevitably face come towards the end of the game but towards like the first couple chapters this is what we're going to be dealing with Gorilla Grodd, the Anti-Justice League, Atrocitus and everything like that. Moving on we have Supergirl's bio that reads as a child Kara Zor-El witnessed the devastation of Krypton before she was sent to Earth on a mission to protect her infant cousin Kal-El. Arriving on Earth decades too late, she discovered that grown-up Kal-El has been imprisoned. Still determined to protect her family and its legacy, Kara will fight her cousin's enemies as Supergirl. Now this is interesting because when you read this, it kind of contradicts what we've seen Supergirl do in both the announcement trailer for Injustice 2 and this recent cinematic trailer that we got for Injustice 2. In the announcement trailer, she pretty much protects Batman from Superman and knocks him back with her heat vision now in this new cinematic trailer she's not fighting against the foes of superman she's fighting against wonder woman which was basically superman's right hand woman in the events of injustice gods among us so it seems contradictory that this whole bio is saying that you know she arrived to earth she wants to protect superman and that is her mission but all these announcement trailers and all these cinematic trailers seem to show otherwise so maybe it's because she's under control from brainiac that she's doing all this stuff and fighting against the people that are supposed to be on Superman's side. But I guess we're going to have to wait and see what's going on with this character bio in specific. 
Now, next up, we have The Flash. Now, The Flash is a very interesting quote tied to the character bio that I'm going to read out to you here. It says, all day I've been reminded how I fail to be a hero. I think that is a really deep quote and it dives deep into the psyche of this character and what's happened to him emotionally since the events of Injustice Gods Among Us. We know that he was one of the only people a part of the regime that didn't want to be a part of the regime and started realizing how wrong Superman's actions were. And you can definitely see that from about the halfway point of the game when Superman starts to do a lot of his more dictator type actions, you know, killing Shazam and completely silencing him from providing any opinion to the team, pretty much forcing people like Barry, like the Flash, from being able to say anything against Superman's actions, otherwise he'd be killed. Now his bio reads as this, Once known as the fastest man alive, Barry Allen has hung up his boots in public shame after defecting from the regime. However, as a new enemy threatens the innocent, the Flash returns to action, determined to redeem himself. So, it seems like he's going to redeem himself in some way in this game, and considering it, it's explaining that he's not going to really come back until Brainiac comes to Earth and he sees this big threat that's going to destroy all of humanity, it's going to be interesting to see where his character picks up and what they plan to do with him and how they plan to explain what he's been doing since the events of Injustice 1. Now last but certainly not least, we have Superman's character bio and he says, the world's changed since Metropolis and his bio reads, after the fall of the regime, Superman now remains a permanent resident of a prison built to contain and suppress the Man of Steel. Still grieving the loss of Lois Lane and their unborn son, Superman maintains that peace can only be achieved through subjugation. But as a new threat looms, can old enemies forge new alliances? Now this is a very interesting bio because it almost very subtly confirms that by the end of this game, the Justice League and all the heroes are going to be a team and they're all going to work together and be the heroes that they once were and not face each other and not be foes. Now it's not necessarily spelled out for you and that might not even be the case come time for the release of the game. They might even just be throwing us off with this character bio and making us think that, you know, Superman's going to work with the team. They're all going to be buddies by the end of the game, but maybe that's not going to be the case. And that would be very ballsy if, say, you know, Superman helps them defeat Brainiac, but as soon as Brainiac's defeated, he just goes full-on regime again and starts taking over the world and becoming the ultimate dictator like he was in the first game. That would be insanely ballsy, but I don't expect that to happen. I do expect that everyone's going to work together. They're going to put aside their differences and everything, and they're going to work together and take down Brainiac because that is what most people are assuming is going to happen with the Injustice 2 story. But... To set up a third game if they ever really wanted to, it would be very, very ballsy if Superman just turns on everyone and the regime goes full force to set up Injustice 3 in their final fight against Superman once again. That would be insane, but who knows? We're just going to have to wait and see. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. What do you think about all these character bios? Which one intrigues you the most? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. I'm Caboose XBL. You can click on screen to make your way to one of the other videos on the channel, or you can click my logo to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter and like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description. Drop a like if you enjoyed, leave a comment if you have an opinion, and subscribe if you're new. See you guys later.